we welcome our industry veteran. Allow me to please welcome the member executive board, IT, HR and safety from Maruti Suzuki, Rajesh Uppal. He would be joining us. Allow me to also next e welcome the CIO head, CSR and HR hero motocrop, Vijay Sethi would also be joining us. With that, we'll be connected to Atul Govil, CTO and head SAP and IT India Glyc Halls. With that, allow me to also welcome Chandan Sinha, CIO Jindal So. Yes, we would also be experiencing insights from Rajesh Mishra, Senior VP Corporate Process and IT CDO VECV, and Nimish Danani, Director from Hitachi Vantara. Well, the session would again be moderated by Abhik Chatterjee, MDBCG. So, with that, panel, it's over to you. Shika, thank you so much. And uh, a huge thank you to uh, ET for hosting us and bringing us to the panel. First of all, wishing all of you and everyone who is also tuned in um, safe and, and, and happy days ahead. Uh, we are in a very unprecedented moment. Uh, today's discussion is on smart manufacturing. And whilst the topic is laced with a lot of fancy words like 3D printing, Internet of Things, um, artificial intelligence, robots, cobots, etc. I'm sure we could we could write a entire book out of it. But um, I think through the panel that we've uh, got on the on the session today, the idea would be to re get a real glimpse of what is working, what is in vogue and how did we go through the crisis uh, and, and, and some of the interesting experiences that uh, uh, each of these leaders have uh, experienced over not only the number of years ahead, but how this year was ever so special. So uh, I'll be posing a few questions uh, to each of my panel counterparts and uh, would, would kindly invite them to, to present their views. So let me start with the first one. Um, I mean, we are in a digital world. Uh, as I said, the list of ending technologies uh, or list of non-ending technologies is 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 just too too long. Uh, Gartner comes with a list, Forrester with another, uh, consulting houses like us with many others. So and 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 each of the other uh, uh, tech providers as well with their with their views as well. But when it comes to manufacturing in India, uh, would be great to understand how mature are we on the on the ground. Um, I know in the mix today we've got a fair balance of uh, of of auto uh, of industrial goods also also part chemicals etc so a good mix between discrete process and repetitive uh, and and what has industry 4.0 or manufacturing excellence really meant for each of you on the ground so let me start with uh, 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 mr upal you and 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 vijay uh, to to start with sharing a little bit of light on how each of your organizations have taken this ahead. Thanks, uh, Avid. Uh, Industry 4.0 and, and all related technology around that to make a smart manufacturing. I think this has been uh, in, in auto industry going in for a long time. You know, all our shop floors have been connected to, to, to the IT systems and and all the manufacturing system, whether it is making right vehicle for the right customer or with right quality and all has been a part of process. So the industry 4.0 is something which is uh, part of the DNA of uh, all auto organizations. Now, uh, what is changing and what is happening around and all? See, one, one thing very clear, industry 4.0 is not really a, a solution and you put into place and, and start working for tomorrow like ERP. It is a journey which everybody is going through that. Now, journey was a stage of POCs earlier, but now it is real hardcore projects going on in the company to ensure that we get value out of this, whether it is the efficiencies or the or the visibility into the shop floors or into the into the uh, getting right kind of quality products coming from the from the uh, plants and so on and so forth. So, so this is something which is at the stage of now rolling it out. Uh, currently, the whole focus is on to new plants coming up and there come everything embedded into this and, and get all the frameworks in place and all and being has been rolled out and, and we are at that stage right now. 
and and we are scaling it gradually to the other plants of ours and and uh, learning from there and on and making it a same framework implemented across the various uh, uh, other uh, plants in the company is the state where we are right now so so it's very much at the at the helm of fair and being implemented in in a company like ours yeah thank thanks abhik uh, so as rajesh uh, rightly put in uh, auto industry has been thinking of and working on digital transformation on using some of these technologies for quite some time now so this is not new industry 4.0 at least if i talk about from hero perspective we set up uh, industry 4.0 center of expertise almost 3 years back 3 3 and a half years back where we started uh, working on various technologies 3d printing as you said additive manufacturing that has been a huge setup that we have iot has been a big one uh, for us ar vr whether to be used within the organization for training or for other purposes has been another stuff so there's a huge work which is going on uh, and uh, as rajesh rightly said uh, many of these have now moved from pocs into actual production so people are working on it but more importantly if i just look from auto industry in general so what we did um, in 2019 uh, last year was uh, in fact it was done in 2018 and 2019 we came up with something uh, called a digital transformation roadmap for entire indian auto industry so which is based on the technologies which will really help the indian auto industry the industry 4.0 uh, technologies so 11 technologies we really found out and the key thing is uh, auto industry is one of those industries which has to be highly competitive uh, and quality and cost conscious uh, so many of these technologies right which have gone from a sales side to the shop floor at that end are really helping the organizations improve quality significantly and uh, reduce costs so briefly yes industry 4.0 some of these technologies that you spoke about all of them are today either in poc stage many of them actually in usage stage across uh, indian automotive industries hero yes we are using many of these sure let me also bring in uh, 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 rajesh and 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 and, uh, and chandan on this one and and perhaps rajesh it will be also useful to to perhaps add a dimension around uh, uh, around telematics as well uh, because uh, there is an angle wherein um, i mean as uh, vijay and, and 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 rajesh spoke about uh, or mr uppal given that we have two rajeshes on the panel so it will be easy for me to at least uh, differentiate uh, is uh, there is a lot of value in the core heart of manufacturing and operations and obviously scaling that um sharing a little bit on the on on how we are taking that journey from operations into the front end and uh, the entire gamut of new product services etc so rajesh and chandan a little bit of flavor from your side with that nuance will be very helpful yeah so thanks uh, big uh, for inviting me so i think what mr uppal and vijay said i'll just briefly touch upon our journey so you know in industry 4.0 we really exploited a very basic uh, you know barcode rfid and qr codes in driving lot of you know documentation improvement warehouse improvement inventory management and you know since this jv is with volvo we were fortunate to learn uh, manufacturing uh, excellence system right in 2012 so we have fairly standardized on a common manufacturing execution system across the plants and basically what it does basically it brings operator tools and machine you know all together onto a single platform and we priority business cases are mostly around manufacturing quality excellence operator competency management and more and more poka yoke in line so how do we improve quality on a regular basis now going from there you know uh, with advent of robotization and agvs so these are deployed based on the criticality so suppose this is a cab belt shop which is a very complex shop and safety is of paramount importance so a lot of robotization you will find paint shop where quality is again very important it is very repetitive kind of job so again you find lot of robotization on uh, supply chain area significant amount of agvs so that has been the journey and coming to now iot our uh, you know focus is around three area one is around uh, energy management predictive maintenance and uh, you know real time analytics of machine performance so this has been our journey so far and coming to now from connected manufacturing to connected vehicles again we were the uh, 
pioneer in terms of in CV commercial vehicle to start telematics in way back 2012. But unfortunately, OEM have not understood uh, how do we take this forward that time. It was seen as a product feature, you know, one of the feature of the product with a portal interface to customer. And over last two years, when we did a very extensive pilot with our key customers and partner ecosystem, we realized that there is tremendous amount of potential in this. Uh, how do we leverage connected uh, vehicles into not only internal use cases, but also with partner ecosystem and customer ecosystem? So that is the journey which we have uh, you know, taken very seriously in our organization. And we have got some initial successes also coming in. Sure, sure. Your perspective? Yeah. Uh, in our industry, which is basically uh, related to manufacturing of pipes, so we have uh, a way, I mean, we are having a plethora of the various kinds of pipes, which includes the large uh, diameter pipes, which is used for. Um, transcontinental transportation of oil and natural gas, as well as spiral pipes, which is used for again, long distance transportation of water. And similarly, we have uh, seamless pipes and stainless steel pipes, which are used in uh, <clears throat> the auto sector. I mean, um, so in our industry, the large diameter pipes and, uh, uh, you know, which are used for transportation of gas and everything. There we have done a bit of uh, automation in terms of using robotics. See in these, um, um, a particular pipe when it is manufactured, it has got a lifetime of 15 to 20 years and some in case they are very sophisticated pipe or used for, um, you know, in terrains which are very difficult. So there the diameter of the pipe is at should be absolutely, you know, uh, to the point that is demanded by the customer. So there we use extensive robotics. The other is that the, uh, the coating of the pipe should be absolutely uniform. There should not be any uh, pinholes or anything like that because if a pipe bursts or there could be a calamity kind of a thing. So we have used, uh, or this is the industry norm where you we use X-ray and we have to keep that film for a sizable amount of time. So these are the two major areas where uh, in the large diam diameter pipes where we, we have used the uh, latest industry 4.0. And uh, when we come to the specialized pipes, that is the stainless steel pipes, <clears throat> there everything is automated. I mean, from one side, a slit coil enters and from the other side, the, the raw pipe comes out and everything is, uh, you know, maintained or controlled by uh, computers, industrial computers, etc. The heat, the flame, the coating, the extent of coating, the length the cutting, everything is done uh, through the computers. So those are the areas basically where, uh, you know, we have been using the latest technologies. Sure, uh, I think I think I think great perspectives to start with. So clearly uh, the fact that although we may not market ourselves that much as the West, but some semblance of industry 4.0 in the in the op space and, and value clearly trickling to happen across different companies. The journey has been different. Let me let me uh, uh, pick that thread and 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 evolve it to what I would say a question that is slightly more tactical uh, uh, that comes on the ground, which is um, uh, Mr. Uppal mentioned about the focus on current set of plants and new set of plants and how you just wire them very differently. I mean, the word legacy in the OT landscape just is very, very different versus the IT landscape, right? I mean, why it's legacy is legacy, but the legacy in OT is like the banyan tree. The roots just go so, so deep and it is that much more difficult to, to unclaw back. Now, uh, each of you being established digital leaders, uh, um, IT leaders within your companies, um, how do you balance this mix of legacy, non-legacy, number one, and more importantly, 
there is a big element of interoperability that comes because a lot of our scaled value is still sitting in my traditional plant. I mean, I could have less than 10, 15, 20 percent of my plant capacity sitting in the new, but there is a whole bunch of my value. This is just not which which is like 25, 20 years old in terms of the equipment, etc. So how do you get the modern world tech to work with the new? Are there elements around new age platforms or any kind of decoupling that we are using? That is that that would be a part of that larger question. And the second part is around. Though in India we are seeing that happen at some places not so rampant is the impact of uh, cyber security and threat to our plant and physical assets. Uh, we have seen outages in smaller areas, but I serve a lot of oil and gas clients globally as well. Uh, for them and asset grids, that's a big, big risk. <clears throat> a little bit of perspective on that would be great. And Atul, if we can start with you and then uh, go to Nimish as well. I'm audible now. Yep, yes. Great. Yeah. So I think uh, I think that's a pertinent question, Abhik. Uh, and uh, what and uh, just to give you a perspective, I represent India Glycols and we've been uh, in the manufacturing domain, uh, manufacturing of chemical petrochemical products, and uh, we also make uh, industrial ethanol and portable ethanol, along with uh, medical oxygen and other uh, air separation units we ha we have in our setup. So uh, now, and this aspect around legacy equipments applies to us uh, as much as to many other enterprises. But one thing I can tell you that no, uh, though, much, though as much we can talk about technology, we cannot wish that wish the current state of OT infra and the legacy equipments away, just can't wish them away. But I also want to highlight that as we speak, technologies like you have OPC, UA, okay, and you have technologies like MQTT, Wattbus, which are now available at scale, and these are extremely reliable, secure options, which you can be used by enterprises as great ways or information brokers, so to say, to connect this to these disparate or legacy systems. In fact, we have used OPC UA to connect to some of these very old, maybe 15 to 20 old year uh, equipments, and, and we've been able to uh, get data out. In this, you know, I, I also want to highlight that you know, uh, we have to now at least see what is the what is the urgency? What is the urgency? So I was just I give you a perspective that you no, know, while we are struggling about these legacy systems and connectivity, and we, some of the entities are still trying to pilot, or or some are even thinking about a POC as we speak. What we need to factor is uh, China as a country. You know, they have been spending roughly around 300 billion dollars all annually to build connected factories in the last couple of years. So which means that you no. Know, with this lever of superior technological sophistication, so to say, they would be able to cater to their customers far higher levels of quality, a variety of design choices. They would be able to eliminate defects, so to say, and also accelerate the rate of new product introduction as we speak. So, and all this coupled with so that just in time production systems as we speak, which will give them an unfair advantage. So, I would say. It's not about technology is the least bottleneck. It's it's about the that will that no, yes, we need to do this. Of course, out of those hundred percent set of equipment, there may be five or ten percent of such equipments which may not be communicable, so to say. But then at least we are able to eliminate the dark spots which are linked to those 95% of those equipment. That itself will be able to, you'll be able to create a lot of value. So that's my perspective on 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 your point Abhishek. sure sure Amish, as i yeah. hand it to you uh, it will also be great to get a perspective of um, as a as a tech leader and a provider uh, what is the future that you guys are thinking through and what out of that could help in uh, uh, smoothly uh, uh, getting to this transition sure uh, thanks abit uh, a bit uh, and uh, Atulji, I think you gave a fantastic perspective and I can't uh, agree more on this. Uh, I think outside the automotive industry, we see this struggle of the old generation uh, plant equipment and the connectivity issue far more, uh, you know, a, a problem area to deal with. 
uh, uh, like uh, Vijay ji and uh, you know Rajesh ji mentioned that uh, automotive has been doing some bit of industry for and you know it's been the ground has been prepared and uh, and like and even uh, Rajesh ji also mentioned that right and, and then then that's happened that you rightly said. Now the challenge is the older generation equipment and then the lines get set up over the years. So you might do one line in 1960s, one in 80s and one in 2000 and you can't really duck away those equipment and many a time there is a connectivity issue, many a time there is a language issue, many a time you don't have any contact with the OEM or the vendor supplier uh, you know, or uh, most of them are not with PLC connectors ready. That's that's a real problem to do with. Uh, and the, a bit to your point, I think as we transition, we clearly recommend as a practitioner when you start your industry 4.0 journey, don't try and attack the problem that you can't solve because that will that will create a complete negative in the organization that industry 4 doesn't work. Start with something where you can get your connectivity and the data layer uh, can get to predictive and pres prescriptive in the short run, which is about 6 to 12 months, right? Uh, then let's try and go to the older generation equipment. And as we are seeing uh, the IoT platforms, so to say, which are helping this monitoring and this modeling layer, we are seeing them being ready with more and more of the connectors which are required to, you know, quickly connect to the machine. Uh, yeah, so that trend is coming. And initially, I think the struggle was the IoT platforms weren't so ready. So they would say only if it is a PLC of so and so make model of so many years of age, I can connect. But I think now things have matured quite a bit. We are um, like we rightly heard MQTT and the OPC protocols have become far more mature and secure right now uh, to connect onto this layer. So, so we do expect this transition to happen and the journey for industry for becoming smoother going forward. That would be my perspective on this subject. Sure, sure. And if I if I also bring on uh, uh, Mr. Opal and Vijay, you to this question. And it will be great if you can also touch a little bit around some of the uh, uh, cyber security elements or the operational security elements as well. I mean, beyond beyond safety and security on the either on the two wheeler or the four wheeler, but just in terms of I mean, because one of the biggest things that leaders worry in India is uh, our data to safe. Rahega. I mean, and, and 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 especially in this remote working world today, um, how do you how do you balance it out? Vijay. Vijay, do you okay. want to go first this time? Yeah. Okay, sure. Th thanks, Abhi. Uh, let me just uh, take uh, 30 seconds first for the part which uh, Atul and Namish rightly spoke about. Uh, see, the reality of the world is that legacy machines, old machines are here to stay. You can't change the machines just because a new technology has come in. So what is happening over the last one, one and a half years is that the technology providers are now coming up with new protocols, new ways to ensure that how can I retrofit my sensors or other stuff to pick up data in the old machines. And that really has picked up and that part has matured over last, uh, significantly matured over last one, one, one and a half to two years, which would mean that even those machines which we might have put in 25 years, 30 years back, which today we call legacy actually in today's term can be made a smart machine and many of them have already been made smart machines so where you pump in sensors and put in uh, some of those protocols to ensure that you pick up data because you can't change the entire uh, shop floor just because a new technology has come in so that has to be kept in very uh, mind at all times and which also is an input to all the technology providers that when you are looking at providing technology to industry you also have to look at to ensure that technology has to be something which can be retrofitted into our old scheme of things also. That is one. Coming to the cyber security, you are right, Abhik. I think that that's one area. Earlier, there was the periphery was a particular periphery or a set of machines or set of devices or maybe a going up to a smartphone and uh, laptops. But when you're uh, that lathe on a particular shop floor is really a smart machine or any other thing over there, a conveyor belt over there is a smart. The trolley which is picking up the goods is a smart trolley, which means that your entire landscape of cyber security changes, which also means that the users who are using those technologies, which could really be prone to cyber security. Till now, we were even when working on the people aspect of cyber security, we were trying training a set of people because we knew that these are the kind of guys who would be using technology. But now the entire landscape has changed. So that's where 
this huge amount of uh, security cyber, uh, focus on cyber security the organization has to do also the second piece is along with that even within the technologies as such there has to be ways and means to ensure that a data beyond a particular point cannot really go and then you have to have kind of self healing if i can use that word where you put in self healing systems where if you detect something you just close it over there and then move on and ensure that that part is cut off and the remaining uh, part is safe and there are huge amount of work that is being done by various startups i know that uh, who are trying to just ensure that cyber security not just what we have known today but it goes into a very different domain and that's one area i a bit i fully agree that each one of us needs to focus on at this moment because our entire landscape has totally changed okay thanks uh, vijay i think you covered all the points but let me just add few things from where vijay started i think cyber security and uh, fact will, will always remain that the ot equipments will never ever to cope up with the upgrades and or with the, with the all the latest uh, you know security software to be upgraded to them not to be you know managed so that will be always be a legacy because it industry has been synchronizing within their servers and all but ot will never ever to manage that kind of growth so i think valid option for you always would be how do you redesign your network of uh, shop floor in a way that you secure them very very clearly and all and that's that's where you manage the whole uh, the shop floor ot equipment connected to the it side but very very securely and all with, with proper firewalling and all the things around so that this is something which is secure over there and over, over and overall above that is being monitored also regularly and also that you can identify what is happening around to do that and all and this is a very specialized one focus area for cyber security to manage ot itself and all so that you have segmented your network to manage it very securely and all and that's very very fundamental hygiene if you want to run a uh industry 4.0 because expecting that all those desperate vendors will able to get all the machines with uh, all the all the all the uh, anti viruses and all will be always be a challenge to do that that's just point number 1 and also on on top of it i think the issue of uh, uh, cyber security management which i said as a monitoring part is also very critical to look at that you know so that you know Uh, how fast you can respond to anything happening maliciously and how far you can detect that this can be taken care of i think it's very very important element to that to ensure that we we uh, have the uh, uh, whole stuff running but it is secure as we go along and all i think there's something which is a lot of expertise required to do that and also you need to have capable people who can drive this in the organization i think it's very very important because you can't you know uh you, you can't ignore this fact that ot will never be able to reach to level of maturity in cyber security as compared to the other one sure sure i think i think great perspectives let me let me shift to a slightly different topic though on i mean the last few months especially in our industry have been very very tough i mean uh, the world is getting to carbon zero but april was a net zero for a lot of especially members in the auto uh, anything that moves around if i can talk uh, talk in a in a very lighter sense but then what it has done is it's actually it's 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 brought one uh, a thing to the fore which is all companies are now looking at cost like never before and i'm sure each of you have 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 done so aggressively in addition i think this entire wave of technology has also emancipated uh, the wave to automation as well so in your uh, uh, businesses um, how have you really got to this balance because a there is an element of work being automated or autonomized in 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 many sections i think b there is an element of cost advantage there but c there is a very careful and a very sensitive balance of just the people aspect so uh, so so how have you uh, 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 looked to balance that piece i mean rather than machine replacing human which we were hearing in india for a long long time it was more in the it ita services world but i think in covid part of that or or how is machine really augmenting human uh, more on the on the manufacturing floor so uh, rajesh should we uh, get your views and then chandan uh to follow on that question so a very good uh, question and uh, uh, so i i would answer it in three aspect one is uh, you know 
I think there is a growing realization in uh, uh, any company of uh, you know in terms of value of digitalization. Uh, so there is a tremendous amount of ownership which uh, we, I personally see uh, that with the management team in using digital and driving you know outcome and performance. So giving that background, so what we did around two three years back, we have our digital strategy roadmap which was signed. And basically, it is into three buckets. One is our digital enterprise, which is traditional supply chain, product development, manufacturing, etc. Other is the digital customer, which is how do we bring unified customer experience to customer. And third is around connected services business. So these three roadmap were secured. So we don't have that kind of challenge not to work on this roadmap in terms of cost perspective. Obviously, the cost optimization is required on your run IT. So we put in a lot of efforts over last one year to reduce our uh, run IT cost without compromising on long term transformation projects. So that is one thing. Second is that uh, we also change our strategy that uh, from enterprise uh, systems like SAP, Salesforce, etc. Most of the new age uh, digital which we are building is on open source mostly pass platform and cloud. So over a period of time, it brings a lot of cost optimization and it also gives you a lot of flexibility, agility in terms of experimenting and doing newer things. So that is the second approach. And third one is around, you know, how do you co-own these transformation projects? This is very important uh, perspective, which I have at least that most of these projects are owned by one of the management leader in his respective function which clear outcomes and deliverables and which makes uh, the digital transformation effective and successful. Otherwise, digital remains as an enabler. So using the strategy, using cost optimization on things which are uh, mostly run IT and also having clear ownership, co-ownership along with business. These are the three things uh, which is helping me personally to drive this. Very nice. Thank you. Okay, uh, let me take some examples. Actually, uh, the digital transformation in our kind of industry is that um, we uh, manufacture mostly uh, to an order to a customer order. Okay, so the f first and foremost thing is that any salesman on the ground, he should be able to give a commitment date of by when the supply can be made. OK, plus or minus, let's say seven days or 10 days. So that was that is an inherent um, you know, requirement in our kind of business because we have traders, we have uh, large government organizations, we have uh, you know, all kind of uh, customers that you can think of. So we went ahead and did a transformation last year and thank God that we did it because that really helped us in this uh, pandemic situation. So the digital transformation uh, was that the moment you enter a sales order or you are trying to, you know, create a dummy kind of a sales order, the system will prompt and tell you that this is the date by which you can supply. OK, so what it does is goes and it digs into your available finished goods stock. If it is not available, then it will go and check <laughs> the raw material, if the raw material is available, if it is not, then it will go ahead and check what is the procurement lead time. And considering all that, then it will dive into the PPC system, the entire uh, production module and fetch out that which all work centers out of the alternates can be picked up and what will be the shortest manufacturing time. So then it just back back calculates everything and I mean, within 10 seconds, it pops up a date that this is the date that you can commit, right? So that has really helped because that has reduced, first of all, ambiguity in confirming because generally what happens is that the moment the customer says, I want it by this date, the tendency of a uh, salesman is to commit it because he wants business. But later on, when that supply gets delayed, uh, then he creates a negative uh, image for the company, you know, so that customer doesn't trust him anymore or there's a 
you know a breach in trust or there's a the trust factor goes down so this really has helped us it has increased our goodwill with our customers and we are able to fairly now predict uh, you know a fortnight early or a fortnight delayed kind of supplies and that has tremendously enhanced the you know confidence of customers in our this thing secondly during this pandemic this entire system is automated so your ppc scheduling and everything is automated that has reduced a lot of our ppc guys okay and this can be worked from this is uh, cloud enabled so it can be you know run from anywhere suppose uh, i enter a confirmed sales order today it will go and it will create production orders everything it will do on its own and you can operate it from your home you can operate from anywhere except for the physical manufacturing everything is through the cloud and through these intelligent systems and we have been really fortunate that we could implement and go live last year before the pandemic started so that is one of the examples i wanted to share no very helpful thank you um, i am being constantly chased for time by the central team so Uh, what i will do is uh, i'll uh, i'll actually pose a wrap up question to all of you uh, my question is in two parts one is um, i think there was good part of focus on the core business core manufacturing and the role of technology so uh, that was very aptly uh, uh, what i would say uh, shared in terms of perspectives and learnings by each of you i think india is slowly getting into a wave of what we would say platform led models for a lot of us in the industrial world right so uh, and obviously there is a the front end pressure seeps into the back end as well very soon uh, so one the first question is how are each of you looking at the platform model and what does it really take to grow a platform business because the 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 traditional company looks at platform very differently by versus the true uh, 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 tech platform model um because uh, one thing we noticed is um for the likes of the platform players they have actually multiplied their uh, in the covid period their total return to shareholder has multiplied by over 150 times so that has been huge while many of the larger traditional players uh, more so traditional have have struggled so one is how real is platform and how do you get platform right and the second point is linked to we are slowly seeing in india and i i foresee uh, in in clearly in lot of markets and lot of segments talent is becoming our biggest bottleneck our ability to attract the best talent retain the best talent because uh, uh, the kids of today boys and girls they just believe in a they just live in a very different bubble and uh, they would want their office bubble to also be the same as their uh, uh, what you would say evening uh, or their snapchat bubble as well so so how do you drive this balance between trying to attract the best talent especially in the manufacturing side which becomes even more difficult because many of our plants are also remotely located so a uh, as as clo- closing remarks uh, a little bit around platform led business and what it means to you and lastly how to get this journey right from a from a talent perspective if each of you could take a minute uh, not more than minute and a half to summarize that will be uh, that will be super awesome uh, we'll start with you rajesh uh, then going through vijay uh, uh, and then i'll invite the other uh, 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 two uh, guests also to come Yeah, so quickly okay. as I said uh, that uh, telematics was seen as a piece of device, and from there to move to connected services. So that's where we are building platform uh, models, and uh, basically they are into three areas. One is for our internal purpose, be it aftermarket product development, product quality, how we can enhance uh, value proposition. Second is for our customer, and when you look at uh, commercial vehicle customer, it is a B two B business. There are multiple personas you know driver fleet manager and uh, owner and mechanic so we are building a lot of connected uh, big data analytics and on to our uh, customer experience platform and trying to create value for them third is around uh, partners ecosystem so so there are lot of mushrooming of telematics uh, solution which has already happened in india so how do we uh, uh, 
you know work with them jointly and through our api platform ecosystem create that go to market value for our customers so be it in trip management or fleet management erp freight exchanges so that is the another uh, segment which we are working and uh, and most importantly on uh, b2b which is with the financiers and insurance where how do we create a new business model sharing of revenues data monetization so this is the strategy it is a strategy which just kicked in last year and we are on to it for next 3 to 4 years the way we have organized because it has two component it has a vehicle component because without digitalization of vehicle you cannot do the you know the end customer digitalization so we have created a structure which is called connected bu where all the stakeholders are together and they are driving this program and on the talent side our strategy has been to induct freshers into this domain train them and also bring domain guys and train them on tech so this is our internal capability is being built along with lot of startup ecosystem who are working with us in tandem so this is briefly i would like to summarize sure sure vijay over to you I thought you also wanted to move to the other Rajesh, but <laughs> ah, yeah, I, 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 that's why I, I, uh, perhaps I'll yeah. close with uh, uh, Mr. Uppal at the end. No, that so will we start with one and we end with the other. Yes, from Rajesh to Rajesh. Correct. Cradle to cradle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, quick uh, responses on the platform. I think uh, that's the right way to go because you cannot be. reinventing the wheel every time you can't be redoing everything every time so what platform approach and which a lot of organizations today have already started working on gives you a huge amount of efficiency huge amount of effectiveness the speed to so called speed to market or uh, doing this projects and reusing lot of components otherwise what happens is that lot of people are doing a similar activity or similar projects and everyone is trying to go their way so i think platform so we know that in auto industry for example when pure making cars long back uh, platform strategy started similarly in two wheelers platform strategy started now in the it space as such people are talking of platform in uh, strategy in a big way and uh, from tech companies it's now getting into uh, industry as such and uh, we are also working on this talent part uh, as rajesh rightly said uh, so talent is uh, an issue uh, getting talent is an issue it's not just about that they want the same bubble uh, morning evening but i think one of the key things also is that the aspirations of that generation are very different so which means that as an organization we need to really reinvent ourselves to utilize so for example even how do we retrain our people so there is a huge focus which is given on retraining so during last 9 months for example we would have done what, more than 300000 uh, courses for uh, our employees e courses so that's one the second piece is how do you build an environment in your organization that especially the manufacturing piece that doesn't look like the old dingy factories where people are not willing to come say for example when we went to a nimrana factory nimrana is what 120 odd kilometers from delhi in rajasthan so we actually call that as a garden factory if you get into the shop floor over there it would be even better than most of the corporate offices in most of the organizations so that's the environment that you get over there So you have to have a physical environment. You also third thing, which is uh, perhaps for this uh, young generation uh, to ensure talent part is if we can give them autonomy and give them enough opportunities to explore, experiment, learn, and try many things. Some of them may fail, which is fair. But I think when you use their creative juices in a big way, they are more than happy to put their uh, maybe 20 hours a day. And that's the culture that we need to work on. And most of the organization, a lot of organizations are today working on the culture piece to ensure that uh, you not just attract talent but retain the talent because that becomes crucial many times. Sure. Thank you, uh, Vijay and, and and Rajesh. I, I think we'll we'll have 30 seconds rapid fire from all of you. So Chandan, if you can go first, Nimish and Atul, and then. uh uh mr upal we will will uh, will will wrap up with your comments sorry for being a uh, a uh, uh, a stickler for time apologies here okay so uh what uh, vijay and rajesh has already touched on the platform side i think that is more or less i go with it 
Uh, the other part is this talent part. Yes, um, in our case, we, <clears throat> we have plants at very remote location, really, really remote location. So our management philosophy is that whenever we expand a business or whenever we start a business, we first make a temple, then we concentrate on the housing of the people, the guest house or uh, you know a colony, and then parallelly we start the manufacturing process or we start installing the manufacturing capabilities, right? Some of our plants, I mean, we have got a, co a concentration of four plants in a place called Mundra, which is in the country of Gujarat. So there, if you ever have a chance, be my guest and visit there. We have a five star uh, club facility out here with swimming pool, everything, everything that you can think of. So these we have realized are the key factors and also a school, by the way. So these are the key factors whereby because you see if you can get a management trainee or you can get a youngster into the organization but tomorrow he's going to have a family and then post the family his botherations will be children's education and the other how does he involve his free time so and then for the elder generation the temple and everything so these social uh, you know involvements are equally necessary um, side by side to your you know manufacturing or your office right so that is the key reason why we have been able to keep our talent intact hire new people and they have been serving us our attrition rate is really very low right unless there is a real medical or a real other problem i mean generally people do not want to live up leave the comfort that we generally provide Awesome, Nimish. So I, I'll be quick on that, and and thanks, Abhik, for this point. So I think uh, <clears throat> upskilling <clears throat> and redeployment is something that we all will probably have to look at it more, especially with new green field coming. You know, we there is a chance to upskill and uh, use technology and redeploy people. That's going to be important. Uh, from a platform perspective, I'll I'll add two flavors to it. Uh, I think the platform which uh, the vehicle manufacturers are doing for their customers and consumers obviously is going to help the consumer and also give you a lot of data to analyze from an R&D and engineering perspective. <clears throat> the other platform which which I'm envisioning Industry 4 will get to is where you will have a platform of suppliers tomorrow, which might be common to many of uh, you OEMs and you know auto answer the provider. Uh, the ideal situation that we say in Industry 4 is going to be you place a requirement on a platform of supply with specification and you are able to get real time bits from some of the tier one or tier two supplier. So that's the other platform piece which I'm envisioning uh, over the years, which also will come up, right? Uh, but but I think COVID has actually been an accelerator on the digital journey and from pilots to implementation is what we have seen from 2019 to 2020. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm assuming and hoping that we, we will together push the industry ahead uh, you know and accelerate the industry for today and, and thank you for everyone's perspective yeah big sure atul and then uh, mr upal hi uh, so i think i'll i'll i think enough has been said about the, the the platform approach of course it's important but i i'll bring on the the hr aspect wherein no i i i want to highlight that no we need to factor that in most of the companies of our or uh, our legacy also, so to say, the top leaders, department heads, and senior managers are actually on the verge of superannuation. Let's let's face it. Which also means that in in few years from now, organizations stand to lose this critical domain knowledge. Okay, and so it's extremely important that using these new age technologies, be it IoT, be it use of uh, AI and maybe scaling it up to a level, you, it at least ensured that the company, which stands as a growing concern, as, as it is called, actually remains so. Otherwise, if the domain goes away, if the domain knowledge goes away, you, we, we, there is a huge uh, issue regarding workplace safety, throughputs, and everything is, is geopartized, so to say. So it's important to digitalize operation, digitize wherever possible. That is one. At the other end, I think is the 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 new age employees, which 
are born digital and for them doing these mundane repetitive tasks is a strict no no so they do, they get bored so often so we can't expect them to keep doing these repetitive tasks over and over again so what we need to do as an enterprise and which we have started now is to to figure out which areas of operations we have to digitize and the last couple of years we have been doing that and using iot's and and uh, and such solutions and uh, i just also want to highlight for the larger audience that you no know, we need to go beyond the poc trap because all of us get so excited about doing this poc that poc and end up if you ask them after a year what exactly have you done they would say we have done 10 pocs of all sorts mm-hmm. that doesn't help that doesn't help what you would rather do is if you are excited or if you are if you are focused that you no know, yes this technology can be of help rather start with a pilot and then try to scale it out rather than getting into poc that's my view sure atul thank you mr opal very quickly some last words i think you are on mute sir you are mute opal sir yeah first and for, for let me summarize it you know first and foremost i think you need a solid it architecture so that you can manage your legacy and the you know platform together that that's a one important point and you need to invest on that to make sure that it is there number two i think both this uh, kind of it uh, requirement digital and the traditional need a different mindset and all so the point somebody said earlier have a right people with right kind of learning to really implement that and all so that's the investment second thing to be done that you have a right organization in place to drive digital and and the IT, traditional it together that's the point number 2 and point number 3 is the whole organization need to have a mindset of digital together and you need to invest a lot of time and energy with whole working with all organization because analytic program cannot run like erp is and all where you need capability to be developed to consume this it and and you need to work on that to democratize and use that in the organization so all the three aspect i think we need to work on that's that's my final final summary on this thank you i think uh, i know we have definitely elipsed the time that was provided but uh, if i can summarize this enriching conversation with three very simple bullet points number 1 is we were industry 4.0 we were putting it to use more tech will come so that ball will continue to roll number 2 i think the people and the employee value proposition has got ever so important uh, i think that's a battle for us to win and i think point number 3 which i will never forget is uh, legacy is here to stay it also is comforting because it gives me comfort that i am safe with my job irrespective of how many new age kids come on the block but uh, thanks to all the panelists uh, for this uh, riveting conversation thanks to et for providing us this opportunity and uh, Have a have a great balanced part of the day and Shikha back to you.